For those of you that have been waiting for my review of these Ryzen 3000 series processors, well, you've had a long wait. But I've finally got my hands on all the models I want to check out, and all my testing is now done, successfully. You've surely watched my recent review of the 12-core the Ryzen 9 3900X. With that model, AMD really made a strong statement. And as promised, I'll be taking a look at each and every Ryzen SKU in the new lineup. So today I'll be taking a look at one of the 8-core CPUs this one being the Ryzen 7 3700X. It most likely is the more attractive choice compared to the 3800X, but more on that in my upcoming video. For the 3700X, you currently have to shell out about 330 US dollars, sometimes a little more, sometimes even less. But how is the performance looking? How much has actually changed compared to its predecessor, 2700X? And how does the new 3700X fare against the significantly more expensive gaming? champion i9-9900K by Intel in games? Or does AMD destroy Intel this time around? Well, it definitely won't be that easy. I'm letting you know right off the bat. Just like it's the case with the 3900X D12 core CPU, AMD does include the same exact gorgeous Wraith Prism stock cooler with RGB lighting here too. Not really surprising such a cooler barely manages to keep 12 cores cool, but dealing with 8 cores should be no problem, right? And how the core clocks react when cooling the CPU with the stock cooler or a liquid cooler, that we'll be taking a look at today as well. Just like I did for the 3900X, I'll be going for a motherboard with a new X570 chipset. In my case, it's the ASRock X570 Tai Chi board, a really good one I can recommend picking up if there wasn't that steep price. While the new chipset does introduce some advantages, such as PCI Express 4.0, graphics cards don't actually benefit from the extra bandwidth yet, and not many of us actually have or will be going for those super fast new NVMe SSDs that make use of PCIe 4.0, meaning those of you that simply don't want to pay the premium for X570 can easily go for one of the older X470, X370 or B450, B350 motherboards. Albeit, you must keep in mind a BIOS update is required, otherwise there's no support for Ryzen 3000. But even I myself can report back with positive things about the compatibility since these 3000 series processors run perfectly fine with my MSI X470 board. As for cooling those 7 nanometer CPUs, I went with the really nice looking Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler by Deepcool. I'm really happy with what it delivers. For a nice spec comparison, I'm bringing up the 2700X of last year for you guys, Intel's 8 core flagship model named i9-9900K, and of course the Ryzen 73700X. Now when taking a look at those clock speeds, we quickly realize there aren't huge improvements to be seen. Huge ones are however the manufacturing process, obviously, as well as the cache and memory controller. We now see native support for 3200 MHz along with crazy high capacity supported for the mainstream segment. Thanks to RAM overclocking or rather XMP or AMP profiles, we could easily go even higher on the frequency. But then again, the limiting factor is the Infinity Fabric, so everything over 3600 or to be exact, 3733 MHz won't really or rarely at least lead to any performance gains. Similar as seen on Intel platforms with MCE or rather multi-core enhancement for automatic overclocking, AMD does offer something somewhat comparable to Precision Boost Overdrive or for short PBO. On default, this feature is disabled most of the time and cannot be considered as stock, but allows for the cores to clock higher as long as temperatures allow for it. Since PBO is not stock, I have left it disabled for all my testing. With a Wraith Prism at full load, on the 8 cores, I achieve 4.225 or partially 4.175 GHz at max. On average, more like between 4.075 to 4.1 GHz. If you decide on installing a more powerful cooler, you can get higher and more stable clocks out of the CPU. 4.15 GHz at max, one could say, and on average about 4.1 to 4.15 GHz. Many of you have great interest in what the boost clocks look like. In my single core test, with this stock cooler I achieve 4.325 GHz. With the liquid cooler it's 4.375 GHz. So we're almost getting that turbo clock specified by AMD. But of 
third, we should soon be expecting new BIOS updates that should help us getting those boost clocks up higher. While from a marketing point of view, a bit misleading by AMD as things are looking right now, but in all honesty, a few megahertz more or less wouldn't really change too much performance wise. I also wanted to check out the core clocks while in game and shadow of the Tomb Raider. With the liquid cooler, the CPU is almost constantly sitting around the 4.25 gigahertz mark, sometimes even hitting 4.275 gigahertz. With AMD's provided cooling solution, I see very similar values, even though the clock speeds do sometimes go down by quite a bit, albeit only for a very short moment. Other than that, you could say 4.25 gigahertz is the most common value we see. Now I don't want to waste any more time, let's finally get straight to my test results. One thing that can be said, no doubt, the Ryzen 7 3700X delivers some really impressive performance. In multi-core workloads it does remarkably well. Sure, the 3900X with its 12 cores is even faster, but this is what's expected after all. When comparing an 8 core with an 8 core from both competitors, Intel and AMD, for the most part in theory Intel clearly is the winner. However, that's only when we compare to the i9 9900K, but with that one currently being priced around the $500 mark, it sure is significantly more expensive than the 3700X at roughly $330. So indeed quite the unfair and dumb comparison for both parties involved. A more fair comparison would certainly be Intel's i7-9700K, also an 8-core albeit lacking hyper-threading, therefore it's a CPU with just 8 threads instead of 16. Such a 9700K currently comes in at about $350 which still is a bit more than what the 3700X costs. Nevertheless, the Ryzen 7 3700X in workloads that heavily rely on multi-threading happens to be the clear winner at the end of the day. And in fact, we are talking of performance differences that cannot simply be ignored. Many of you guys, however, that shop for a CPU in this price range don't always have the intention to produce content, do rendering or similar intense projects. So gaming performance understandably is an important aspect to factor in. Your expectations surely are high. Luckily I can tell you that even in games the 3700X does manage to score, even though it's not quite as good as the 3900X does or Intel for one. All in all AMD does catch up well, even with this 8 core 3700X and would you look at that, there are in fact cases where the gaming experience is slightly smoother on AMD side thanks to the higher minimum 
maximum values, 1% lows in a few game titles. So those of you that focus less on gaming and instead more on work stuff and productivity, I would definitely recommend going for the 3700X. If all you do is game, a 9700K will serve you well, even though with its only 8 threads, it might not be as future-proof as some may like. And on top of that, you have to keep in mind, it's a bit more expensive as opposed to the 3700X, plus you need to factor in a bit extra money for a CPU cooler, since it isn't included. And while the Wraith Prism may not be the quietest or most well-performing cooler, it must be said, it does its job well for an 8-core CPU. I have a different opinion when trying to cool the 12-core part with it, something AMD apparently has or had in mind. But I'm constantly comparing against Intel. What about the performance gains over AMD's own processors of last year? The 2700X came and hit like a bomb and to this date happens to be a popular choice for many enthusiasts that simply put don't want to deal with the high heat output, high power draw and most importantly high price tag of the i9 9900K. So at this point I can applaud AMD. What has changed in such a short amount of time however, a single year is remarkable and this is thanks to the Zen 2 architecture and 7 nanometer manufacturing process. Even though the 2700X, in my opinion, never really could be considered bad for gaming, honestly, in more than a few cases, there were wider gaps between AMD and Intel, even when compared to cheaper SKUs of the Blue Giant. This apparently has changed with the Ryzen 3000 series. The new lineup now somewhat keeps up with Intel when it comes to gaming, which is thanks to those huge IPC gains, so more single core performance to work with. And as everyone knows, for years and years, Intel Intel's strongest selling point happens to be gaming for their mainstream consumer CPU lineup. What blows me away is how well AMD does in terms of power consumption. While things aren't looking super pretty at idle, which hopefully still can be fixed down the line, at full load, which is more important for desktop PCs in my opinion, similar to how the 3900X impresses us, so does this new Ryzen 7 processor. These are amazing numbers. The Ryzen 7 3700X consumes noticeably less power than its predecessor 2700X does, less than Intel's i7-9700K and not to speak less than the i9-9900K. Temperature wise I have to let you know though, these new 7 nanometer processors aren't so easily cooled anymore. Simple cheap coolers, if that's the term you want to go for, simply wouldn't do the trick anymore. A decent air cooler or even an AIO liquid cooler would be recommended if you're asking me. Nonetheless the 3700X can indeed be cooled with the included the Wraith Prism stock cooler, even though noise levels aren't the greatest. So yeah sure, the Ryzen 9 3900X with its 12 beastly cores does steal this show from those smaller Ryzen SKUs, it makes sense, but for the majority of us, a 3700X still happens to be the better or rather wiser choice. For one at a price of $330, it's significantly cheaper than the 3900X and barely drops behind in games that much. Right now it's looking like this, honestly I couldn't recommend going for any of the comparable models by Intel, be it 9700K or 9900K, especially if you can get the snappy 3700X for less. With the latter you could, on top of it all, experience slightly better minimum frame rates in a few games. But sure, to be exact, Intel still remains the unbeaten number one in most game titles. I almost would have given today's AMD Ryzen 7 3700X my highest possible award, Platinum, but due to the higher idle power draw, I went with the Gold Award. With that being said, thanks goes out to all of you guys that watched this video till the end.